All right, students, the document-based question, the essay with the biggest powered points of any section on the test. No point is worth more on the test than a DBQ point. It's worth about four uh, multiple choice points. So these ones matter a ton. And the nice thing about DBQ is that if you're just a solid reader um, and writer, you, you can come away with a decent chunk of points without any history knowledge. Of course, history knowledge is always the secret sauce to our success. So um, the more that we can have, the better. Before we begin, just like with the LEQ, you should pause this video and brainstorm where all the points come from for an AP history document-based question essay. All right. The points that you should have found are very similar to an LEQ. It's totally similar structure. This is beautiful for us as people who are trying to remember this stuff. Okay, so for our DBQ, we have point number one comes from a thesis, just like last time. It's got to be historically defensible. It's got to lay out a line of reasoning and it's got to be on prompt. Same exact language is used for both the thesis for the DBQ and the thesis for the LEQ, same thing. And that is also true for contextualization. Just like last time, we're trying to set the stage. We're doing the Star Wars crawl at the beginning of the movies. We are typically talking about things that happened immediately preceding what we are talking about in the essay, okay? So to use an example, what were the primary causes of the end of the Cold War? If that was my prompt, what were the primary causes of the end of the Cold War? Then I might discuss in my contextualization things like proxy conflicts in Vietnam, Korea, and Afghanistan. I might talk about the nuclear arms race. I might talk about, uh, I don't know, the Olympics, because why not? Now, I want to make sure that I don't talk about things in my contextualization that are going to be used in my essay, though. Right? Contextualization needs to be separate from the essay. So never talk about your documents here or anything like that. Anyways, I'm, I'm kind of digressing. Um, all right, then, then we get these three, uh, four, four points that all have to do with how we use evidence. Okay, these are all evidence-based points. So um, first of all, there's using the evidence in the documents, okay? And basically get one if you use like up to four or something. And then one if you kind of use like all of them. And just like with last time, you want to use these to support an argument. Okay, support an argument. So there's two points inside of there. Okay, there's an outside evidence point where you, it's almost like you you come up with from your background knowledge something that could that would have been made a really nice uh, document based evidence okay so one other thing that wasn't brought up in the documents but that is relevant to the prompt and helps you to argue your thesis and then finally there's the sourcing point this is like the boogeyman because you have to usually for at least three documents at least three documents you've got to explain why the happy why the happy of a document matters and the happy is the historical context of the document the intended audience of the document the purpose of the document or the point of view sometimes they call that perspective of the document. Why do these matter to the way that we read the document? I'm not going to go into depth on how to get the sourcing point, and I'll try to remember to explain why that is at the end of the video. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points. Our last point is completely identical to the LAQ. It's the complexity point. So in my class in ninth grade, I told you, the ones that you want to make sure that you master before you worry about anything else are your thesis point, your contextualization point, your use of the documents to support your argument point, and your outside evidence point. If you can do this, you score a five out of seven on the DBQ, and that's incredible. 
movement is so powerful and it's really, really doable to get a three or better on an AP history exam if you can get a five in the DBQ, okay? Once you master these, then move into sourcing. It's just, it's just significantly more to think about, which is why I, I told you in ninth grade, don't even worry about sourcing until you're consistently getting the first five. And then finally, if sourcing is just old hat to you, then you can start to nerd out from other people on YouTube how to get the complexity point. Okay, let's quickly draw the essay and then I'll let you go. So just like with our other essay, we have the same exact shape happening. We're going to contextualize to start out our essay. We're going to end our intro paragraph with a thesis. And we want to make sure that we bridge the contextualization and the thesis together. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, go look at my video on the LEQ, okay? We are going to have, just like with the LAQ essay, two to three body paragraphs. Three is pretty common. Each one of these should be linked to one of the topics that I introduced in my thesis. I should start each body paragraph with a nice, clear topic sentence. And then I want to use evidence from the documents to support the points that I'm trying to make in my, in my uh, paragraphs. These are each sub-arguments that all build up to create my central argument here um, that I've laid out in my thesis, okay? So just remember when you're using documents, this is a evidence-based essay. So cite evidence. Don't talk about like in document one, they said, that's just like a really elementary way to write about documents because it's writing about documents. And this is a document-based question. You're answering a question. In our example, what were the causes of the end of the Cold War? You're answering a question and they're giving you a handful of primary source and secondary source documents to use to try to answer that question, okay? So cite the author of document one. And then I always tell students, just put the document number in parentheses at the end of the sentence where you use it. That's not required for like, a, you know, official credit, but it's part of that psychological warfare. We're just trying to be nice to the, uh, the grader. So I want to use my evidence. I want to, where I can, use my outside evidence, wherever it fits. I only have to do this one time typically to get the point. So I want to do that here or here or here. And write about that just like you wrote about the evidence from the documents. And then if you're going to try sourcing, then when you bring up a document, you also attempt your source. But it just gets really complicated and messy. Okay, the last thing that you do is restate your thesis. Don't just recopy your thesis. That's kind of pointless. But from the top of your head, restate what you have essentially been arguing in your essay. What happens with at least five to 10% of my students, every essay that I grade, is that your thesis up here was broken. It was either not historically defensible, didn't lay out a line of reasoning, it was not prompt. Oftentimes they're really vague. Students will say things like, there were similarities and differences in the building of these two states. And it's like, yeah, no kidding. That's not, that's not arguable. There's no reason to defend that historically because everything has similarities and differences. But oftentimes, by the time you write this whole essay, you're clear on what your point was. And so you'd be surprised how many people score the thesis point here or they failed it here. Okay, that is the DBQ. And that ends our absolutely thrilling, breathtakingly beautiful treatment of the three AP History writing assignments. And remember, I'm not an official college board guy. So this is all just some random dude who once taught you talking to you about the essays.